Hi everyone, it's Dash of Dave here and I'm back for another crafty video. This time we're going to have a bit of a, a show of some haul stuff, a bit of a chat, a bit of a talk about where I've got some other stuff from and where we're going from here, etc. So, <clears throat> first of all, as you can see, I have something on my desk. Now, there's a story behind this. It's a typewriter. I've wanted a typewriter for a long time. Um, Brian found this in a charity shop. He saw it. It was £12 or something like that. Um, nothing very much at all. Um, and he bought it for himself. And then I saw it and I liked it. But he just wanted a typewriter. And I fell in love with not just the typewriter, but the colour of it. And I'll show you that in a second. So um, I found a typewriter that he liked. Then we went over to go and buy it. This person had got three typewriters um, and we bought one of them not the one we intended to go over there and buy um, and that was I was buying that for Brian um, so that's part of his birthday pre sorry part of his Christmas present which I will he's already got so he's, he's not getting it at Christmas because it was 30 pounds so it was part of his Christmas present um, but it's a really old-fashioned one and I'm, I'm sure he'll show you that on his channel if he doesn't I'll get him to um, but then they've got two other ones which are a bit newer um, and the one that I went over to go and buy which is also a beautiful colour so um, he is going to we're going to go over and buy the others um, the other the colourful one um, I will probably buy and he will buy the other one anyway so um, that's basically the the, the crux of it basically so I will show you this now. This is a beautiful, beautiful colour, so be prepared. It is gorgeous. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, it needs a bit of a clean. It has been used. It did come with a um, a sticker on it of the person that owned it, um, and that was Dr. Glenda Leeming, um, and she came from... Um, Aylesford, Hans, so um, anyway, um, that's where it came from. So it needs a bit of a clean. I have changed the, the typewriter ribbon on it. Oh, there's a bit of Brian hair in there, I think. Um, I have changed the typewriter ribbon, so it, I, and it works. It all works fine. A couple of sticky keys. I found that the L kind of sticks there and stays. One of the um, page support things has broken but you know it's been used you can tell that it's had tipex on it because it's gone all in the mechanism um, <clears throat> but it all works nicely um, you know other than a couple of sticky keys like I say but it just needs a bit of a clean it's got a bit of rust in it but that's all to be expected it's made of metal as well so it's not um, so it's a plastic it's not a plastic one it's one of the metal ones um, and it came with a receipt from 1978. So um, Brian's got the receipt. Um, I can't show you that at the moment. Brian's got the receipt because he's scanning it in so that we've got a record of all of these things that we've bought. So um, so like I say, it's a metal case. It types a dream. It works fine. Um, I am I'm really chuffed with it. So very excited. I will give it a bit of a clean. Uh, the only thing that... that I did wrong was I put the typewriter ribbon in upside down so the reds at the top and the blacks at the bottom so the color selector um, says red when it's black and black when it says red when it's red so <laughs> you know hey I know I can take it out and put it back in again and do it the right way around it just got a bit confused it's a long time since I've changed the typewriter ribbon so but I was able to do it and and it all works fine it all just types nicely you know you've got your backspace you've got I don't know what that oh that's the um yeah that's the shifty thing that's one of the shifty things that's the shift lock um and it doesn't have a, I was like why is it never one because you use the i um so or the l I'm not quite sure the a capital i or the lowercase l anyway um it's got a little carriage mover on here it all works beautifully so um and then there's like you know you can change the neck return thing whatever the page the line spacing that's what i'm trying to think of 
So it's it's beautiful, like I say. So what I did do is I typed off camera for you um, a little letter. Now the letter, the reason why I'm going to tell you about the letter is because this sparked an idea for all of the utilitarian stuff that I've been making. I'm now going to start going down the route of I'm built, I'm creating a character that uses this kind of stuff. Okay, so um, I've created a character called Margot. Okay, um, and uh, Margot works for the Victory Mining Corporation um, and she's a procurement supervisor um, and she works at Empire, the Empire Gardens Division um, which is in Charlminster um, and her telephone number is 7493 and that's her direct dial. Now um, she does have a team of other people so I've, I've you know put it together um, with a letter um, and obviously made it look like the the paper clip has been there a little while. These, this is some rusting that I did, and I'll show you the rusting shortly. So I created a bit of a letter where she's writing to Glenda Leeming. Um, I forgot to put a space in there, but hey, never mind. We all made mistakes with the typewriter, didn't we? Um, so it just says, thank you for your inquiry. Unfortunately, we do not currently carry um, Dexterson Clair... Uh, Seft Ooh. Try again. Dexterson secretarial supplies. I didn't think about me trying to read it when I typed it. Um, so are therefore unable to supply you with your specific product. However, we do carry a similar range, which is supplied by the MG Stationery. Uh, sorry, it's M by MG Stationery and Office Supplies. I have enclosed the the latest product catalogue for you for your perusal. Should you wish to place an order for um, any of those items um, from the, any of these items from the catalog, um, I have supplied well, the cat from the catalog I have supplied. This is why I shouldn't read aloud. <laughs> Please do not hesitate to contact me directly, or else one of my girls will be willing to assist you with your order. I await your correspondence. Yours sincerely. Um, Margot Postle, Postlethwaite. Okay, P.S. I have enclosed my business card for your convenience. So there you go, that's a business card. Um, in the days when like business cards were kind of typed up on a typewriter. So, sorry about the terrible reading, but dyslexia ain't going away. <laughs> Even when you've typed your own thing, you still can't read it. So, so I've created that little letter that goes with this. So, it's looks like it's been hanging around for a while and that's what I wanted so that's what I typed on this typewriter so I love it it types really nicely and like I say etc so then the reason why I mentioned the MG catalog is because that's another thing that I purchased okay so this is the typewriter so this is Margot's typewriter from now on so I'm just going to pack Margot's equipment back up again okay and <clears throat> Because she works in procurement, she deals with all the stationery. So she has the latest catalogue from 1960. Okay, so this is spring 1960. Now, I purchased this off eBay. Now, this is a genuinely old copy, and it, I paid more than I, want, I would have wanted to for this, but... I had to have it. I saw it. I bid on one and I didn't win it. And then I saw this and it was another one and it was closing. And so I bid on it and I went a little bit higher than <laughs> I wished to, but I, I secured it. So this is where it all started to build from. So I, I, I'd got the typewriter and I thought, well, I could create a character. And then this came along and then I thought, well, this is the, the next part of it. So this is a beautiful catalogue. Like I say, it's from 1960. So it's older than me. Let me just have a drink. So it's from 1960. I was born in 1969. So it's nine years older than me. So that makes it 63 years old this year. So so this is the cat. This is a catalogue. And I did. I knew what condition it was in when I bid for it, but it's because it's genuinely old, I wasn't worried about it. But look how absolutely gorgeous this is. I'm just going to move that out of the way so any of the stickiness doesn't get on the 
on the page and tear it. So I will not be using this for cutting up. So this is kind of a part of my prop. I may well use photographed elements of it in future project projects or even use it as a reference for things that I can create. So it has all sorts of different things in here and things that you you forget that were part of an office environment. So um, like I say, there's all sorts of things. So cord controllers for telephone wires and um, never stray memo pad. <laughs> uh, what else have we got on here? MG Teller Tellerest. Oh yes, remember when you used to have a, a, a hook that went over your shoulder to be able to rest your telephone and everything on? <laughs> I could do with one of them with my mo for my mobile phone because, like, trying to squash my mobile phone between my seventeen chins and my shoulder um, ends up muffling the telephone call. So, um, staplers of every variety that you can think of. I didn't realise that there was such a, a, a big variety of staplers. Um, so I remember these with the big, like, a very big circle on the top that used to be able to. There used to be desk ones, and you'd whack them with your with that part of your hand. And I guess that's the reason why they're big, the big ball on the top. Um, oh, a Rexel Bambi. Now I've got one. I've got one of them, haven't I? Here. Yeah. I don't know whether that's the same. Um, in sorry, a pocket stapler in a soft or hard plastic case. I mean, it's Rexel. It's still it's all called Bambi. So I I guess it's just a, an older version probably wouldn't be made of plastic like that is so although hmm, 60s plastic was very much being used so more staplers who knew who knew more staplers um then staple remover ace staple remover i'm not sure how ace they are i just use my fingers so um a list of staples in every variety you can think of office sundries so there's um, hole punch things. There's, um, did I see on here, was there any claw staplers? Oh yeah, there. That's like a plier stapler, which is like that that I have. Um, so uh, yeah, so they've got tr paper trimmers, scales, um, Hole drill, single hole drill, a drill. Um, oh, these staplers, uh, start staplers. These pencil sharpeners. You remember those that were connected to the desk, and you, yeah, and they had like different thickness dials and all sorts. Of, I remember them from school. Um, scales, um, waste paper baskets, letter trays, um, <laughs> beautiful ta tables and office furniture, um, a file tidy. A tea trolley, because of course no office is complete without a tea trolley. Um, a coffee table. <laughs> um, and then all these lovely kind of clips and fasteners and that sort of thing. Um, staples, pins. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, struggling a bit at the moment with having almost feeling like I'm losing my voice. And I felt very unwell and very lethargic the last couple of days so um and brian has too so i think there might be something going around so just watch out people um erasers or rubbers as we would really call them but i know that's not the same around the world so um more erasers adhesives or oh, copy decks adhesive yes um that's the stuff that smells like dead fish um Oh, that's clever. A little razor that slots to the side of your, your typewriter. <laughs> um, adhesive. I remember glue that came in a bottle like that. Um, arrow mounts. I'm not sure what they're for. Are they the ones that kind of stick on the back of your photographs? I'm not sure. I should read it really, but I'm not. I'm, you've just tried me to see it. Tried me. You've just seen me try to read out a letter that I'd typed. <laughs> um sellotape dispensers so sellotape you see that's what we use in the UK sellotape um, damp dampers 
Oh yes, that's um, they were for like your stamps, so you didn't have to lick them, weren't they? So, um, calendar things. This is the bit that got me. Ashtrays. You completely forget that ashtrays were part of everyday life in an office. People used to smoke in offices, although I can't understand why they smoked in offices surrounded by all that paper. Um, not the, you know, the safest thing to do, places to smoke, but there you go. Um, uh, Placemats and table mats and coasters and all sorts of things. Um, so we've got desk pads, uh, we've got telephone indices, we've got um, ballpoint pens and biros. Do we have this? this? That feels like there's more than one. There is more than one there. Uh, more pens, desk pens. Um, then we've got pencils, and we've got um, pencils, pens, eradicator, and blotting. I don't know what an eradicator is, but there you go. Ford's blotting paper. Oh, oh, blotting paper. That makes me think. Oh, I can make a blot it. Oh, anyway, sorry. Just getting excited. Uh, numbering machines, like, you know, wow. Um, we'd like all of those, wouldn't we? Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> then we've got um, more stamps and stamp racks. Um, hand stain remover for office and home. Okay, I don't know what that's for. I guess that's for getting the typewriter ink out of your fingers. Uh, heavy glass ashtrays, um, wall dates, stationery racks, chalks, crayons, paints, pins, crepe. I'm not sure how crepe was used in an office, but there you go. Um, exacto knives, exacto blades, um, safety guard knife. <clears throat> scissors and visa cards, um, legal sundries, web straps, um, rulers, drawing instruments, duplicate books, files, folders and cash boxes, portfolios, wallets and zipper cases, Um, leather briefcases and travel bags, uh, briefcases and school satchels, uh, carbons and ribbons, typewriter sundries, that'll be my, I need to whiz back to 1916, go and order something, oh no, that came out in 78, but it's 18 years before this was even, sorry, 18 years after this was even created, so. Um, Typewriter sundries. I don't know what that and a razor shield is. Never seen one of those. All that. I've got like holes. I don't understand how they work. Oh, do you put those over the thing and then paint it with the tippex so you don't get it all over the place? I don't know. I don't know. Well, that lady needed to have used that because it was all over a typewriter. Um, I have no idea what this is. Parker Roller typewriter cleaners. Don't know how that works. Never seen one of them in my life. Um, brushes. Typewriter sundries. Calculator. Wow, look at that calculator. Um, more calculators. Context adding machine. Uh, uh, shavers that's plugged into his light, may I add. Plugged into a light. I don't think that's very safe. And also, look at that shaver. Wow. Um, <laughs> a goblin tease made. Yes, in an office, of course. Razors and tease maids in offices. Um, <laughs> more calculating machines. Duplicators, I remember doing the, I can smell the duplicator ink now and the, that sound, kajung, 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 kajung. I'm turning the handle, I used to do that at school. Um, memo stamp duplicators. Um, duplicating inks duplicator accessories and there we go so that's it so that is an original 1960s uh, magazine and like to be for an, bearing in mind that is a very much a um, a throwaway item isn't it so like you wouldn't have 
why this was kept. It's not like it's a magazine that somebody might have kept for an article. To keep um, an item like this is very unusual um, because these were things that you, they were just, you know, how many people keep leaflets and product catalogs these days? Might need to hold on to them, they might be worth something. So that, I love it. Um, and I'm, that's the third time I've looked through it and every time I look through it, I find something different. So next thing is, we to talk about rust. So this is what I've rusted. So I rust, the, so Brian does the coffee dyeing and I do the rusting. Um, I think he's a bit afraid of the rusting side of things because it's chemicals and things. And I like, you know, that kind of sciencey side of things where he likes to just, you know, just get on with it and not worry about it whether he's getting the mix right and that sort of thing. So we've rusted a whole load of things. So these are kind of like, um, like garter clips, loads of like um, paper clips in here. We've got belt buckles. We've got bits of jewelry. We've got these, which are um, like, um, what's it clips braces clips so like trouser braces or i know they're called suspenders in america so um like more clips more clips there are lots of clips and all sorts of different bits of metal in here so there i rusted all of those um and i have got loads more to rust as well so i thought i'd just go through the rusting side of things i did a lot more paper clips this time round and the reason for that is I use, I'm using a lot more especially with this kind of utilitarian stuff um, but Brian wanted some other things rusted as well so he's he sent me his rusting and I did his rusting I send him my coffee dyeing and he does my coffee dyeing so so um, talking of coffee dyeing we'll get some of that out so Brian's been doing some coffee dyeing for me so there's he sent me through some things some I send him the, the the stuff that's uncoffee dyed and he sends it me back all done. So it's all pre-done for me. Um, you know, envelopes and all sorts of things in here. Um, but he's also done, uh, let me get these bits out first and then I'll come back to that. Um, he's also done, do you remember the doilies that I bought? Well, these are them now. So these are those little ones. And then there's a whole host of, of doilies that have been coffee dyed to varying degrees. So some are, you know, quite white um, with a bit of coffee on like this. And some are just, you know, touched, tainted with a bit of coffee dye on like those. And then you get ones that are almost completely submerged ones like this that are again because they're they're dyed in stacks there'll be varying levels of coffee dye on there so they're all very individual and unique so um all the different sizes um are here um he's done me some like small ones and some medium ones there are some other ones that i've yet to pick up um but i won't get them all out because that'll just get in a mess so if you want your coffee dyeing done and you don't have the space send it to brian but don't tell him I said so. <laughs> and then uh, let's go through what other stuff. So um, some of this isn't mine, so I won't show you what isn't mine because some of it Brian bought for himself. Um, and I'll let him show you that on his, his own channel. Um, but some of it is mine. So we went to a little... Um, we went for a wander around in Wakefield the other day, or well, Saturday, um, and we went to a completely different, we've never been to any of the charity shops in Wakefield, we went to a charity shop in Wakefield and discovered all of these beautiful things. So I'm going to go through what they, what they are. They came from a different charity shop and I'll come back to them in a moment. So we got some um, of the... Um, what's it called dado rail paper um so border paper um from the charity shop it cost us 50p for this um 
and it was the reason for getting started on this is um christina hall sent me that one with the lovely raspberries on do you remember i'm i've i've had that forever and i've still got some but i don't know where it is at the moment so i can't show you what, which one i mean but you've all seen me use it at some point so christina hall started me off on that so blame her um so every time we see a roll of this now we get it so um then we got these which are some really old cards um playing cards but they're not just because they're old playing cards but because they are just so different they are um very different typeface and just very beautiful i mean the backs aren't particularly gorgeous they've got a shipping i think they're a a cruise company or a shipping company but the just the imagery is just so divine so you know the how beautiful are they so of course they were we saw those they were a pound had to buy them so that's where we are with those so we bought those and that's that's something we're going to have between us so um that in there so i bought those for for us both so everything that you see that i've got i will i always buy to share with brian anyway so there we go <sighs> bought these these cost me can't remember what these were 50 pence everything seemed to be 50p in there there was we <laughs> there was a lady in there and like nothing was priced and we said how much is this and every time you showed us something she would say mm, 50p <laughs> so um so there's just some like little plant doilies plant pot doilies um there we go that can just be used for various things you know margot might have one of those i don't know then we've got a recipe book which i thought margot might enjoy you know my fictional character margot um it's by marguerite Patton. you know she's uh, i've got a whole story that's developing about margot in my head so um you know there might be page of this torn out or you know attached to something or you know whatever anyway i just really liked it because it was really old looking pages and it didn't have any photos in it which which is really unusual because like these days you wouldn't think of making a you know i don't know let's have a look let's see what what, what we've got here oh, these are are these all drinks Oh yeah, homemade wines and drinks. I mean, you wouldn't think of making something unless you saw a picture of it. What's it going to look like? Carrot wine, sparkling carrot wine, spiced carrot wine. I've got to say that none of them are appealing at the moment. Sparkling spiced carrot wine. <laughs> oh, and then we've got celery wine. Oh, even worse. Um, so, and then there's these. So these are knowledge magazines. Don't know what when they're from, um, but Margot's very keen on learning and developing herself more and these look like they've never been even been looked at and they're in pre-decimal um so that is um two shillings and no pence so they cost two shillings each um and i don't really know what the conversion rate of that is so um but we liked these because of the you know the imagery of the the pictures in here um you know margo is very keen on learning like i say um developing herself she's a a woman of the world she's also you know margo her best friends um call her pogo um and that's from school um and <laughs> see this is how this is how it's gone in my head um and her best friends are cynthia and daphne um so <laughs> <laughs> so yes they, <laughs> so expect more from the the saga of margot the margot saga and look at those beautiful flowers margot really appreciates a nice flower so she's not so keen on sea urchins <laughs> so there we go so um so yeah margot like i say works in in procurement i know that like you know it's the kind of stuff I've been making is very uh, spy orientated, but you know, she could be, you don't know. She works in mining. You know, it doesn't mean to say that's her only job. Um, so <laughs> oh, 
All the boys think she's a spy. She's got Betty Davis eyes. Uh, she's got a Cary, Cary Grant kneecap, but that's another story. So, um... <laughs> Shut up, Dave. So, anyway, there we go. So, from all of that has come Margot. Oh, no, we didn't go through the postcards. So, the postcards, I thought, because Margot might want, you know, a, a tube map for when she goes down to the big smoke um, to meet her friends. Um, and then she's got a couple of photos from her dad's shop. Um, and then there's, like, various cards that people have sent her... Um, over time, all, all of her postcards and things. They're not all for Dow. They're not all for Margot, by the way. Though. But I just liked. I, I picked these up because I just liked them. But then it, it helped me to develop character. Characters. So there's a few postcards from friends that have been places. Um, I loved this, just because it was. Um, well, it's blue. It's old and blue. Uh, it was these. I've seen these many a time, but I've not seen them with this kind of finish to them. And that's, I, I didn't actually look at the stamp date. What I liked about this is these don't tend to... I find them, and they are not tend not to have been used. Whereas this one has been sent. Um, oh, 1958. There you go, Margot. That's part of your... <laughs> collection I don't doesn't say to Margot but it could be her parents oh there we go Whitbread <gasps> that's Whitbread as well oh no it's Whitehead okay all right never mind <laughs> forget that scrub that um but anyway they're part of her collection so um but yeah these were all of these cart all of these individuals and these things were 10 pence each um, in a charity shop I went into. Again, that was in um, in Wakefield. So I like the the uh, black and white ones. I think suit Margot's collection quite well. So, um, but yeah, there we go. So that's that's what we have. Apologies for for the random weirdness. Um, well, no, I don't apologise for the random weirdness. That's part of me. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. So, um, you know, feel free to comment on what you think about Margot and her her life. And, you know, um, are you excited by it? Is it something you're intrigued by, where I'm going to go with this? Um, and we'll be putting stuff, more stuff together and doing more utilitarian stuff. So, anyway, that's it from me. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, my name is Dash of Dave, and I love you all without exception, until you give me a reason not to. So don't give me a reason not to, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, folks. Lots of love. See you soon. Bye. <coughs> Lots of kisses. Oh, dear. I gave you more there. Uh, and a big hug. Oh, the extras were from Margot. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye.